Good morning, folks. Gorgeous plasma filament dance on the northeastern limb of our star here. We've got all the top news from beneath our feet out to deep space and a special video coming later tonight. But right now, we go to the sun at spaceweathernews.com, 193 angstrom showing ionized iron from the SDO satellite. Dark southern coronal hole, bright point active regions have it cornered in the polar zone. That active region on the north plateaued in terms of flaring as a good bit of the trailing portion of the group has decayed, but it left not just the lead umbra, but a proper sunspot with both dark central umbra and penumbral surrounding region. It never broke that split beta magnetism for flaring, but in terms of sunspot production, even the small uptick in spots we've seen basically the majority of the last month has not given us any strong enough to form penumbra around the core, at least until today. Solar wind bottoming out overnight with a slight rise from anemic to weak plasma stream levels here using the ACE satellite. Geomagnetic conditions not really budging as the solar wind explores the calmer territories. The top quake of the last day was a 6.3 in Kira Kira Solomon Islands, but my eyes are drawn more this morning towards the blood echo uptick descending from the low velocity zone in South America and the small uptick ongoing to the east of that, especially with considerable pressure cells and convergence regions nearby. We go next to Kazakhstan, where extreme weather is barely an adequate description. The cold and snow of a blizzard, but with the ferocity more like a summer hailstorm. Airports and many public services are shut down in numerous cities, and it's all because of a jet stream weakness. The purple and magenta V-shaped dip over the area is driving an Arctic blast into Central Asia best of luck to them. The weather comes not from the north but from the west for the Pacific coast for much of the northern states and up through Alaska. Seasonal low in the northeast Pacific is cycling hard, bringing record rain and record snow for others. That is set to continue all week long with some forecast calling for multiple feet of snow accumulation in heavily populated areas with some mountainous regions having closer to 10 feet forecast as these storms are set to continue all week long. Now we'll ease into some complex science with a look at the beautiful NGC 1022. Hubble showing its dusty spiral structure here, which is trying to hide the central bar of the galaxy. Aesthetic indeed. Up next, let's go inside, and we're looking at yet another confirmation that space weather and cardiac concerns are linked, especially for those already at some level of heart risk. Blood pressure, heart rate, direct electromagnetic effects within the heart, arrhythmia triggers, stroke, We've seen almost every way you can slice the data and we find correlations. Here they are looking at geomagnetic effects and fast solar wind streams, and when it comes to cardiac dysfunction correlated with space weather, it's not usually about direct impact but indirect interactions with frequencies reverberated at ground level by the magnetic field or the induced current applied to our body systems. Cosmic rays would be the exception which do indeed pull the direct impact, but they were not the focus of today's examination. The magnetic field of Earth is up next, and we're not talking about the one we've got now, we're talking about the primordial one. In some of the oldest zircons ever studied, this group has discovered that our field is not our first field, and that it took over after the reign of a more primordial magnetism of Earth. Lucky us, we'd look more like Mars if we hadn't had such a resurgence after the Genesis dynamo dissipated. For anthropologists, historians, and those of you just generally fascinated with the movement of people around the world throughout time, about halfway between now and the last magnetic excursion on Earth, the western central Chinese region saw an incredible influx of humans. This was about 6,000 years ago at most, they say, perhaps as little as about 4,000 years ago. During this time, the higher elevation regions of the northern land masses were still becoming populated during the recovery from the last ice age. Up next, a bit of new terminology in the space realm, the nova realm, but not in line with our recent micronova examinations like dwarf nova in the disks of stars or the type 1 x-ray bursts at pulsars which barely make it out to the disk. But today we're going towards the higher end, in between recurrent nova and the big supernova. They're called intermediate luminosity red transients, and they have the power of a small supernova, but they are not as bright, and they always leave a star behind that could nova again. Today we see their examination of the brightest in that class ever to be discovered, and that's saying something considering the famous Monocerotus Nova is technically considered one of these intermediate level blasts. Again, that term was intermediate luminosity red transients, a kind of nova.
And speaking of terminology, we've got a special video coming up tonight to help prepare for the Plasma Cosmos miniseries, not to mention it'll help with the morning news examinations as well. Pretty visuals, key regions of space, and a bit of why they matter to the bigger picture. That video is coming later today, and we greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close, and of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.